be seeing more Starship booster parts coming into the board of Brownsville shortly. Here's what's going on down at Starbase. We've been keeping an eye on LB Jill, this interesting looking boat that we saw go past some of our Starbase live cameras a few days back. Now, LB Jill is a lift boat, a self-propelled, self-elevating platform that's usually used to support offshore oil and gas drilling or construction operations. Lift boats have telescoping legs, which can actually go down to the ocean floor and lift the main body of the vessel out of the water, creating a stable platform for work. You can see why it caught our eye. She was coming out of the port of Fushan in Louisiana. She arrived on July 12th and stayed for one night. Now, at the time, there wasn't really anything to tie Jill to rocket-related operations, but check this out. She left the port of Brownsville and headed south down into Mexican waters. She arrived at a location about 11 and a half nautical miles off the coast of Mexico and then hung out there for a couple days. And then on July 16th, changed her status to please keep clear 0.25 nautical miles. Why might a vessel do that? Well, it may be under tow or have limited maneuverability. It may have mechanical problems. It may just be staying stationary in a busy area. This isn't a busy area. It may be carrying hazardous cargo. Seems unlikely with the design of this vessel. Or it may be supporting offshore operations involved with surveying, dredging, cable laying, or diving, all of which require a buffer zone for safety. Now, if I had Starship or booster parts on the floor of the Gulf, I'd probably want a safety zone for my divers and my underwater equipment. That's interesting, but it's still not quite enough to ring any rocket bells. But on July 18th, Jill reappeared on the Port of Brownsville Manifest with a new service description. To load rocket parts, one metric ton. Now, one metric ton is a little bit low, but maybe that's just a placeholder. If you're salvaging something, maybe you don't know the exact weight of what you've salvaged yet. It's also a little confusing that it says to load rocket parts. Some of the other listings on the manifest say unloading things, unloading wind turbine blades, unloading gasoline, but maybe it's just a typo. It doesn't look like Jill is actually unloading rocket parts. That's a conspiracy waiting to happen. Maybe she's preparing the ground right now. She's gonna come back and pick up rocket parts and then put them on the bottom of the Gulf and then be like, oh, here's where the rockets splash down. They didn't actually launch the thing. Come on, really? It wouldn't be surprising to learn that a ship is in the Gulf salvaging rocket parts. It's not the first time SpaceX has done this. Back in September 2024, we saw SpaceX salvage Booster 11's engine section. Now that launched all the way back in June of 2024, but those salvage operations in September were spotted entering the channel on the 25th. And we actually flew over Massey's and spotted it on the 26th. So they brought that home to study. Booster 12's hot staging ring, which launched back in October, October 13th of 2024, was salvaged from the Gulf on October 22nd. We saw it actually happening out in the Gulf. And on October 31st, once again, we flew over Massey's and we saw the scrap they had recovered there in the yard. So SpaceX recovers rocket parts. With the ship's position, what rocket parts might these be? For Starship Flights 1 through 9, the list of things that landed close to shore is pretty small. Debris from Flights 1 through 4 were pretty far offshore. I don't think the salvage ops would be this close. With Flight 5, we did see that discarded hot staging ring splash down a little bit closer to shore, but that's already been recovered. Flight 6 booster is interesting. Booster 13 did an offshore divert and stayed floating in the water close to shore for several hours. In fact, from our position at the Margaritaville Hotel at South Padre, we saw the booster drifting from left to right. That would have been a southerly drift in the Gulf. It could very well have drifted well into Mexican waters before it sunk to the ocean floor. Now, Flight 7 and 8 also had a hot staging ring that splashed down close to shore, so maybe this is an option, but the hot staging ring is really dense. When the hot staging ring splashes down, I would imagine that it sinks really rapidly, and once it makes contact with the ocean floor, it's going to be much harder for currents to move it around. And lastly, Booster 14's experimental landing-turned-explosion could have left pieces large enough to both float and be salvaged by SpaceX. So here's the question. Did any of those rocket parts that we saw splash down in the Gulf close to shore have the possibility to end up where Jill has been hanging out, indicating possible salvage operations for a few days, and then saying rocket parts in the Port of Brownsville? 
It looks like our most likely candidate here is Booster 13 because of the fact that it stayed intact, floating on the surface for some amount of time, and we observed it drifting to the south towards Mexican waters. Another question is, why is SpaceX even salvaging these parts in the first place? Is it for engineering purposes? Are they doing an environmental cleanup? Is it just for fun? Are they going to end up in a museum or something? I can only hope. We'll have to leave that one to SpaceX to answer. Now, you can bet that we're going to keep our eyes open and our cameras on down there at Starbase. But one critical note. Even though the vessel's position is reported on websites, it has a keep-out zone for a reason. The safety and security of the operators performing the work is of utmost importance. There may be an opportunity to see what's aboard when it comes back into port, but don't think you're going to hop in a kayak and go down into Mexican waters for internet points. If it's possible, we'll catch some footage for you and you can keep up with that both on Starbase Live and right here on Breaking Space. By the way, it's a new channel if you haven't subbed to this one yet. And you can also follow us on all of our social media accounts for the latest news. I'm John Galloway for NSF and I'll see y'all later right here on Breaking Space.